Hi everyone, uh, this is Megan Cole over at Issue and today we're going to be doing our webinar on how to use Canva content, upload it onto Issue and uh, all the different awesome ways that you can share your content uh, with Issue. So just to go over today's agenda again, um, we'll have a few minutes to go over the introductions as well as a quick overview of issue kind of our mission and what we are working on and uh, follow that up by a product demo where i'll be covering canva as well as issue and how you can use the two together to really optimize your content um, lastly we'll have a little bit of time at the end for a q a session and if you stick around until uh, the very end, we might have some extra surprises for you. So uh, just a couple housekeeping notes. All the participants today will be muted throughout the duration of the presentation, just to ensure the best audio quality for everyone. Uh, please submit any questions anytime you have during the webinar. You can do that by clicking on the Q&A button over at the bottom of your Zoom call. Um, here we have a little screenshot just to show you where that is. And finally, we'll be recording today's webinar and we'll share the link on our follow-up so you can listen to it again or share it with any others who might be interested. Uh, so again, my name is Megan Cole. I am a marketing manager at Issue. So I am really focused on the marketing materials that we provide at Issue, but I also work very closely with the product. Uh, so I'm always really excited to do webinars like these so I can share some of the ticks tips and tricks on the marketing side of things, uh, as well as how you can really use Issue to get a lot of, of um, value for your content. Joining me today as well is Craig Kingsbury. Uh, so Craig will be in the Q&A portion helping answer some of the Q&A questions you might be asking, and he'll also help moderate uh, later today during the Q&A portion, moderate some of those questions. So uh, Craig is a senior customer success manager over at Issue, uh, and you might see his responses in the Q&As as well. Uh, so just to get things started, as a marketing manager, I really love getting kind of data and insights and more information. So we have a couple quick polls that we'll be running today. Uh, and the first one that we have, just one question, we'd love to know what softwares you use to create your content. Uh, so I'm going to make that poll live now. And uh, if you could just choose any you can, uh, any of the answers, whether you use Canva, InDesign, um, Photoshop, or any uh, Microsoft Office, any of those, feel free to choose any software or softwares that you use to create your content. Um, this will be really helpful for us in order to kind of better inform how we optimize our own products as well. So um, to go a little bit into our mission over at Issue and what we work on, our goal is really to enable anyone from independent creators to global brands to create, share, measure, and monetize their, their digital content. Uh, now more than ever, for sure, a lot of uh, users, creators, and marketers we see are shifting their focus into more digital content and looking at what materials they have that maybe they could repurpose or uh, post digitally. And it's a really awesome opportunity for us at Issue because we have a lot of really great solutions um, in particular for you uh, all for creators. So uh, we're really excited to be able to share some of those insights and uh, solutions that we've created so far. And how we do that, uh, so I know this looks really intimidating, but I promise it's not. It's really just kind of four simple steps. The first step being that you publish your content to issue. Uh, so this is where we're really focusing on once you've created your content, whether it is in Canva, InDesign, um, Microsoft programs or anything. Uh, once you have your PDF content, you can really easily drag and drop and upload it to issue to create a shareable link, both um, as a direct link or as an embeddable link on your websites. From there, you can also generate different derivatives. So 
what this means is we can take your content and really easily and very seamlessly create other versions of that original PDF, whether it is a scrollable story like the article stories tool that we have for mobile or visual stories, which are vertical video content pieces, really great for social media postings, uh, or our GIF maker, which can create quick uh, GIF previews for your social media's cadences as well. Uh, we have a lot of different options and different ways that you can take your content, repurpose it, generate derivatives, and create new content from it, um, which then takes us into sharing. So with all of the different components that you've made or, or uploaded to issue, you can essentially share it anywhere that you might find digital content online. Um, and lastly, we are uh, really excited about our statistics tools where you can look at the content you've uploaded, shared, et cetera, and measure how that has uh, driven an impact on the posts that you've made. So with our statistics tools available in some of our paid plans, we have some really nice in-depth analytics that can give you a little bit more insights and inform you on what type of content you want to create. So you can even create kind of a loop there on um, what derivatives of your content you want to create and share to even bring more life to the content you've originally posted. Um, Another thing to note on measuring the impact and seeing the engagement levels on your content that we are really proud of is um, our Alexa score. So we are within the top 500 uh, websites on kind of the whole of the internet uh, in terms of our Alexa ranking, which just shows that we have a pretty engaged audience who spends a good amount of time on our website and, and reading content on our website. So uh, with a little bit of our search engine optimizations, as well as your content that you've created, you can really easily get um, a great audience impressions and uh, reads from your content posted to issue. So that brings us all to today's demo. Uh, I'll be again showing you how you can take Canva content, download it, and then upload it to Issue. And then I'll be focusing on all the different ways you can share your content on Issue or optimize your content on Issue. So I'm going to whoop, I'm going to switch over to Canva now. So uh, here I am on the Canva homepage. I'm using a free Canva account, and uh, this is what it looks like once you have logged in. Canva does a pretty nice job at providing a lot of different templated options for your designs. Um, so today I have a few catalog or magazine designs that I've already selected, and I'm just going to kind of play around with one of these versions. So uh, here we have kind of the templated version that I used and I've replaced some of the images. So uh, you can dive deeper into Canva. They have some great help center materials as well that we'll uh, be sure to link out in our blog posts and follow up content. Um, but essentially some of the quick overview pieces and some things that I really like to use in conjunction with the issue product is um, just getting images, you can very easily kind of drag and drop images. They provide some free stock photos that you could use, but you can also upload your own. Um, and you can play around with the layout, move the pieces how you see fit, or make any other additional changes. One thing that I like to do, especially for that digital engagement side, is I uh, will add hyperlinks right into the content that is being created in um, in issue or rather that's being created in Canva because with issue, uh, you can, we can automatically detect the links that are hyperlinked into your content. So once it's downloaded, we can automatically detect those links and include them in your published content as part of our paid plans. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too long on the design for this catalog just because I really want to focus more on the great features and tricks that we can do with issue. But once it is to your liking, all you have to do is go over to the top corner here. So uh, this button here, 
click it and it will send you to kind of the download options where they give you a bunch of different file types. So their suggested file type of PDF print is the same one that I would recommend using for posting your issue content as well. Uh, that's kind of just the best uh, file format that is the um, options on Canvas content. So once it is ready, I'm going to click download and it is just going to automatically download to my computer. So now that I have that downloaded, we're done with using Canva and we can switch over to issue. Uh, so actually let me go back and here I'm on the issue homepage when you are logged in. Uh, again, I'll be showing you how you can upload your content onto issue and a few different ways that you can share and optimize that content. It's going to be a combination of both some of our paid features as well as our free features. So I'll be sure to try to um, indicate which one is part of our paid plans or uh, free plans as well. So to start, I am just going to click add content on the left hand side, which is going to take us to our upload and workspace. Here you can easily drag and drop any of your files or you can upload them from Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, so again, if you're using a different program such as InDesign or um, any like Microsoft PowerPoint or any other programs um, aside from Canva, you can also upload any of that content right here on issue as well. Um, we recommend PDF style content. And you can also pull from your Dropbox or your Google Drive if you have some materials that have been shared to you on uh, those channels. You can also connect your uh, cloud service accounts to upload your content there. So I'm just going to take the content that I've just downloaded from Canva and drag and drop it into place. And while that is uploading, I'm going to add a couple of details in. So uh, what we have here is the title, which is the information and title of your publication, as well as descriptions, which help improve your search engine optimization and make it much easier to discover as well as categorize uh, for your readers. You can choose your different types, whether it's editorial, promotion, books, or other materials. Uh, we also recommend kind of checking off as much of these details as possible to make sure you really are targeting your materials to get the best impressions. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm also going to click on the show detected links button. So this is part of our paid plans, which are indicated by the stars in our um, kind of UI pages. So anywhere that you see kind of those green stars is part of our paid plans. Uh, the detected links now are being automatically found and added as clickable links in your posted content. Some other features that we have as well include the ability to make them private. So unlisted content, uh, scheduling your content out so you can post it on a different date or um, allowing your downloads so folks can download it and have it for offline reading as well. So once that content is all filled out, you can then go ahead, go back to the top, see how it looks have a quick preview and then click publish so it will be live. So uh, now that the content is live, there are a couple different ways that you can share and uh, post that content. The first way I'm going to cover is the embedded content tool as well as the full screen reader. And then I'll go into some of our mobile tools as well, mobile tools and solutions. Um, And then I'm going to edit this afterwards. Um, so here I have my uploaded content where I am going to go over to the left hand side. We have a bunch of different options and ways that you can share your content. So uh, one way that is very popular is by embedding your content onto websites. This is part of our paid plans, uh, starting with our starter plans. You can essentially get your content. We automatically detect the different background colors um, available, or you can input with hex codes, or you can choose from the color bar selector uh, to choose any different colors. 
as well as a few different features. We have more information as well on our uh, resources pages as well. And once that is to your liking, you can then get this embed code. So it is an iframe embed code that essentially lets you embed this posted content anywhere on the web. So if you have your own website, if you have a blog, um, if you have any other like web pages that you might want to embed content on, our iframe uh, embed code is really easy. You just copy and paste it into your websites and you don't really need any additional coding experience. Uh, we do all of that work for you and you can really easily then have a, uh, your published content posted on the embedded web pages. Another way we can share this as well is with our full screen sharing tool. So this is a little different from the embed tool uh, because what we do instead of embedding it onto a web page, the full screen sharing tool will be, and let me just click, a full screen page where you are fully engaged on your uploaded content. It takes up the entirety of pages, almost like it's its own web page. Um, so this, uh, also chooses a pink that I kind of have as one of my default brand colors. Uh, and here you can see that the links as well are clickable. So here in this link, um, I've just linked out to the issue blog to show what the embed pages look like a little bit as well. Um, so here is one catalog from Patagonia just embedded directly into our blog posts. Um, and what's really nice about this, I would say, is um, in Patagonia's case, they're essentially uploading their catalog content that they already have and just optimizing it a little bit more for digital experiences. Uh, it has this really nice tactile page flip that you can do both when in full screen or embedded, as well as the detected links. So it really gives you the feeling that you're turning the pages in a book. And it gives you a little bit more, um, I think, of a, a tactile experience that's really nice and we're always uh, really proud of on our end over at Issue. So again, this is the full screen sharing, which is a full page version of it compared to uh, a regular Issue web page, which looks more like this. So you still have your page flip experience. We also continue to have the click through links. Um, it will just be hosted on our issue.com um, when you send them to direct issue links as opposed to embedding it or uh, sending it as a full screen link. So going back into my publications, um, other ways that you can share your content include creating article stories or um, articles. So these are essentially really great for mobile optimizations. Here I have an example that I've already started working on. I'm going to click edit here just to show you what this interface looks like. Essentially what we are able to do is uh, choose any of the pages that you want to make an article out of, whether it is all of the content or if you have longer content, a few sections that you really wanna focus on. Um, and here you can take these materials, we can automatically detect the images as well as the text and um, essentially deconstruct the materials that you've uploaded and reconstruct them into this scrolling page experience. So it's very easy. You can essentially click to add any of the sections and then uh, make edits to them as you see fit. We have a few different uh, type styles that you can play around with if you want to add a little bit of hierarchy or a different look and feel for your pages, um, as well as the ability to add the photos in as well. So once these, um, once you've kind of pulled in the materials from your content on the left hand side, and um, it is to your liking, which you can see on the right hand side here, you can then preview it. So this is giving you kind of a preview of what it will look like on mobile devices. Again, this is really great for that mobile experience, which we know um, users are really engaged on mobile now more than ever. Um, so instead of having the page flip content or your PDF content where the user has to um, 
pinch in and out to read it. We have created this kind of endless scrolling option that makes it a lot easier to read and it gives you opportunity to have a lot more content that you can then share out um, to your users on social or any other channels you might have. So once these are ready, I'm gonna click publish here and my article story has now been published onto issue. So we provide a distinct link that links out directly to the article um, and you can also share these materials on any of your different social channels that you can easily connect to your issue accounts. Um, and then you just have to kind of push the button and it'll automatically generate a post that you can share. So uh, this is the article stories tool. Going back now, I'm going to go back to my home page and uh, look at my publications again, just so we can work from the same publication. Uh, here in my publication workspace, I'm going to now work on a visual story, which is a little different from article stories, but equally exciting. So over in the left hand side, we have the enhance button again, and I'm going to click on visual stories and here you can create visual stories or you can uh, edit one. So here I'm going to go ahead and edit one that I've already started working on. Uh, so with visual stories, essentially taking the same principles as the article stories tool where you can select a range of pages and will automatically pull all of the images as well as the text from that content and um, make it into vertical video content. So if I want to make any changes, I can really easily click and drag to move the images or replace images as well as clicking to change the text, the fonts or anything of that sort. I can also kind of pull from my assets here of my detected page content and copy and paste any, any copy in there. Uh, we have a few different styles as well. So today I'm using the engage style, but we also have a couple more uh, with more to come as well. So finally, once it's all ready, you can click preview and it'll give you a, an automatic preview of what it will look like. So it has that really nice kind of panning and makes your what was originally a flat PDF into a really nice vertical video piece that can be used on your social media channels or shared on your web pages or wherever you see fit. So once it is ready and good to go, I will click create story and it will um, automatically start creating and assembling the materials all together so they're good to post. Um, I can also make edits to the description or the title, which is really going to help with my search optimizations again, um, because uh, an added bonus to updating your content and going on and sharing it is that we create the uh, Google AMP optimized links as well. So uh, when your visual story is live, you can download those assets as MP4 files. Uh, they'll also be available to download on the issue app. When you're logged into the account, you can download any of those materials. So they're directly on your phone or you can share it directly from the pages here by clicking on any of the buttons. Um, but another way that you can share it is with the Google AMP button. So here I'm gonna copy that link and open it up just to show what this looks like. So this is very similar look to kind of our full screen sharing, uh, but focused on the visual stories tool where we automatically play the carousel of uh, images. You can add more as well. I just went with three for this one, uh, but you can add more cards and these pages are um, live on uh, issue as well as searchable on Google. So that's where you want to really add those search optimizations and uh, you will have kind of a, a everlasting page that you can link out to as well with your materials. Um, so it's just another way that you can really take and optimize your materials for a lot of different channels and audiences as well. And it also of course links back to your original publication. So uh, those are just a couple of ways that we've created um, a lot of different content. One of the last ways that I'm going to show today is with our uh, GIF maker. So here, if I go over to the left-hand side again, I can click on create GIF or GIF, uh, and we can create a quick preview that is a looping, um, a looping GIF version 
of your original content that you have created on Canva or anywhere else. Um, again, I can change the background colors, uh, move them around, anything like that. And once it is to my liking, I can click download source file and to save it as a video file for social posts or download it as a GIF file, which um, I like to use, especially on um, social or on my um, email posts. So one last thing that I'll show, uh, this is from our MailChimp webinar that we did recently, which we may host again in the future if uh, we find folks are interested. Uh, but here I created this email using MailChimp's templates. Uh, in conjunction with some of the issue materials from a catalog that I created. So again, we're using the GIF maker kind of as our top piece. And then I used a couple of visual story elements as well that are embedded into the email. So it's a great way that you can take your flat PDF content and bring it to life in multiple ways across social, email, anywhere digitally or directly onto your website. And that is the full demonstration of um, all of the issue capabilities and um, materials that we are super excited to be sharing today. So uh, we have one more poll that I'll have running throughout the Q&A portion as well. If anyone is interested in a free one-on-one -on -one consultation on how Issue can help transform content into stories, emails, or social posts to engage your customers, please let us know by answering in the poll. Um, we have a yes, no options. And uh, if you stick around to the very end, we have one more special offer as well. So. Now we're going to switch over to the Q&A where I'll hopefully be able to answer any questions you might have um, about issue or some of the tips and tricks that I have uh, for Canva. Awesome, so we have a lot of questions here in the Q&A. So I have some of those lined up. Uh, the first question, Megan, is uh, when we choose magazine covers, we have to change only the photos and text in the same position. So just asking if they can move things around and kind of customize it within Canva. Yes, uh, so let me, oops, switching back over to Canva. Essentially, when you have your templates, you can really easily change your images out by clicking and dragging them. If you want to make edits to the templates as well, um, you can also move the materials around or resize them and save um, your final versions as well to um, make different versions. I hope that answers your question. Um, sorry, I, I don't know a ton about Canva, um, but I can definitely chime in on some answers that I, I do know. So this next one, this one is around um, the stories tools. So mm -hmm. after you create article and visual stories, how do you save and upload them to Instagram and Facebook? Yes. So for article stories, let me just go back into the issue workspace. Um, Actually, once you have published your article story, so here I'll click publish again, we have the links that you can copy, save, and schedule your posts if you use other uh, channels to schedule your posts, or you can directly share and post them from issue using these buttons. Um, if you go over to your publications space as well, um, here, I'll just go into my example. We also have um, in the share section, share links, which lets you share your article stories. You can choose from, if you have multiples, you can choose from here. You can also uh, push them directly here or link out. Or if you wanna share the direct publication link, you can uh, share them here. For visual stories, and I'll go over to my visual stories button. Um, you can click the share button here and it'll automatically let you share the uh, AMP version. This will also, the buttons here will also share that AMP link out. Uh, but the other way that you can do that again is by downloading your, um, actually, downloading your materials. So you can download them as uh, one long video or as individual video pages um, and you can then post them 
or with the issue app. So um, with the issue app, when you're logged in, you can access all of the same materials to download and share them on your channels, or you can push any of the buttons here um, under the share visual story buttons uh, at, the, at this section when it is live. Awesome. And then th this one is just kind of referring specifically to the visual stories. Uh, this uh, story feature is very cool. Uh, they just want to know a little bit more about Google AMP. Uh, they're not familiar with it. Yes. Uh, so the Google AMP format is created for uh, search optimization, especially for the mobile experience. Um, I believe it stands for accelerated mobile platform. Um, so essentially, they have been able to prioritize pages that are have the AMP versions as well. Um, so when you create visual stories and we have these links, we are automatically indexing all of that content with Google for search to um, raise the reads and impressions as well as the engagement levels of your content. So um, it's a really great add-on. Um, this, this is also part of our, our free plans. I think I forgot to mention both visual and article stories are part of the free plans. So um, super awesome way to distribute your, your content. And then uh, this question is uh, about statistics. So they just want to know the difference between impressions and reads. Yeah. So for impressions and reads, if I think about it kind of in um, the advertising space, an impression would be where a user just kind of looks at the content and they might not be engaging with it as much. They just have definitely seen it hosted on a page where uh, read is defined as spending a little bit more time or engaging, clicking on things and um, doing more with the content. So that is the key differentials between um, the two. And uh, this person, uh, going back to stories and sharing to social, um, even though Instagram and Facebook are owned by Facebook, will the visual stories work uh, with both platforms? Yes. So with the visual stories elements, we essentially make them downloadable as video pieces. So they're vid vertical video content. Um, so what you can do is share them on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. You could share them anywhere that you can upload video content on. You could even share them on your Snap channels. Anywhere that you might have a social presence, you can post them to the stories or you can post them um, to your web pages as well. All right. And then this one is uh, a little bit more, uh, I guess, would say uh, SEO focused. How can you increase your viewership on issue? Oh, yeah. Awesome. That's a great question. Um, so... Oh, spoiler alert. Um, so to really optimize your content for issue to get more reads, I would recommend both creating article stories and visual stories, as well as really going into the details of your um, content. So I did not do a great job at this uh, myself during today's demonstrations, but I really would recommend adding more details in the descriptions of your content as well as creating all of those um, articles as well, because all of these elements help us better index the content with Google search optimizations, um, as well as make it easier for us to categorize on our own categories and reader engagement end. Uh, so I would definitely add as many details as you could across all of those different pages. Awesome, and we have uh, just a couple more questions here. Uh, so this one is, would these work as well for sharing on LinkedIn? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I was thinking about this earlier, actually. So I think typically when you think about like content that's posted on LinkedIn, whether it's white pages or downloadable materials, um, I would really recommend using the full screen sharing tool. It's a great way to make your materials look really polished and um, have that page flip look and feel again, as well as our link detection that makes the links clickable. Um, so I think it would be a really smart and, and cool idea to use the um, full screen sharing as the link that you share out on your LinkedIn posts um, to engage your, your audience instead of just sending them to kind of a download page for a um, posted PDF. Awesome. And then, um... 
Last question, and this is kind of related actually to what you're just saying. How do you suggest using the full screen reader link? Yeah, so uh, there are a few ways that you would use the full screen reader link. So one could be for, right, the LinkedIn post, um, but other ways and other benefits to it is really the ability to fully engage the user in that full screen um, experience. So here I have kind of used it in conjunction with the GIF tool um, in order to get the readers of my email lists like quickly onto my, my pages. So here I have a catalog where they can get a quick preview of what that would look like right in the email. Uh, when they click out to the link on that I've linked into the email, it'll send them directly to that full screen sharing page. So they're fully engaged, um, fully able to kind of interact with the pages and there are no additional distractions on those pages, which can also then lead you directly to any links that you might have. Um, so that would be my suggested way to use it is when you really want to get the users or your audience to um, be fully invested in interacting with your published materials, this is a great way to just directly send them to the materials. Awesome. And that, that, that's uh, the last of the questions. Awesome. So um, as promised, we have some special webinar savings uh, that are available for you today. Uh, so we have 50% off of issue premium annual subscriptions as thanks for joining the webinar today. Uh, the offer code is Canva 50 P-R-E-M annual. Uh, the offer is going to be sent over email as well as to all attendees and it is good for um, until August 31st, 2020 at midnight Pacific time. Um, so hopefully you can uh, create a premium account with our, our savings and get to posting and distributing your content on issue. So uh, thank you all again for joining today's webinar. If you are interested in any future webinars, definitely recommend checking out issue.com slash webinars for more details of uh, more webinars to come. And uh, thank you again all for joining.